Hello, my name is Matthew Marvin. I also go by the Poker Gypsy. Welcome to my poker blog. I will be taking you to different locations across the globe and teaching you what it's like to live and play poker there. Today, I will attempt to give you a glimpse into what it's like to live and play in Las Vegas, Nevada. I will be rating the locations one through seven based on how many days a week you can play professionally there. I will also be giving you a meter the meter represents whether or not I feel that the field was soft or difficult. Now it's important to remember that just like a lot of places, a lot of locations have its good and bad areas. Now, everything you see is coming straight from the camera phone. I want to bring a new meaning to reality TV. Phil, when you first started playing poker, did you ever think you'd see a day where poker players would become celebrities and and treated the same as rock stars? I mean, you you get rock star treatment, and when you first started playing, I would assume a lot of people probably looked down on it, thought it was like for degenerates, right? It probably had a negative connotation, and now it's completely different. All right, everybody, welcome to the Las Vegas vlog. I lived in Vegas somewhere around 2013, 2014 area. My Las Vegas experience was critical to my poker career and I learned a lot about life as well. So I was living in Atlanta, Norcross area to be exact, and then I got the opportunity to move to Vegas with my brother. At this point, I'm living in Georgia. I have already put a lot of work, thought, strategy, all that into my poker game. I'm going to all the underground poker games after work, hustling, building up the bankroll. I'm a good poker player at this point. I know I can be successful at it. Opportunity presents itself to move to Vegas, sell the car, pack the bags, grab the dog. I'm out of there. So my brother and his family stayed in the Henderson area. So we get to Vegas, I discover the limit games. I take some time, I play, focus on the limit games for a little while. I make money doing that for a little while, but it's peanuts compared to what I was making in No Limit Hold'em. Now I had a job in my own place to stay when I moved to Vegas. Unfortunately, both of those things fell through. So after about three months, I find me a nice cheap apartment more towards the action area where I want to be at. Find a nice little apartment not too far from the strip. It's a two bedroom, one bath, 
beautiful patio, five fifty a month. However, it's on the UNLV side, Swanson and Twain. For those of you who are not familiar with that area, since you are already on YouTube, search Swanson and Twain song or Twain and Swanson credit check. You will see a video that looks like this. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to read off some lyrics to you from the hook. <coughs> I got your bitch on Twain. She be selling that thing. On Twain and Swenson. Shout out to Red Sauce. So I moved into my apartment. Got a job working security on the strip. I'm playing poker after work. Working and playing poker. And I quickly figure out that I'm not as good as a poker player as I thought I was. You can go to any room in Vegas and find about three pros at every poker table. It became pretty clear to me that the competition knew way more than what I knew. I was a good poker player at this point, but I was missing something. Vegas is where I really began to patch holes in my game. If you guys are moving to Vegas, get ready for a cultural shock. The job market, way different. When I moved to Vegas, I had a desperation point. I went to apply for a job at McDonald's. I go in, I ask the manager for an application. She turns around and asks me for a resume. I'm sorry, what? A resume? You telling me I need a resume to go ding fries ready? So I turn and walk away. And there's two people behind me with resumes waiting to fill out an application. That's the Vegas job market in a nutshell. If you need a job in Vegas, security is always hiring. It's a great market to be in. All you need is a Vegas ID and your guard card. I paid, I think, 65 bucks for mine, so it's not that hard to get minimum qualifications. Once you get your guard card, opportunities open up. I started out doing unarmed security on the strip for about $9.50 an hour. Worked my way up to armed security. Did all the high-end stuff, uh, jewelry stores, mansion parties, events, you name it. By the time I left Vegas, I got up to about 20 bucks an hour, which wasn't bad for the time. I also had a job selling artwork on the strip. I got fired from that job for playing poker on the clock. So I consistently worked on my poker game. Um, 2000, probably late 2014, early 15 is where I became a full-on pro. After doing that routine for a few months, two things become apparent in my life. I love to travel. I love to play poker. So now I have to figure out how can I get paid to travel so those expenses don't come out of my bankroll. So I went to truck driving school in Vegas, got my CDL. I've been on the road playing poker ever since. Now everyone knows Vegas has the glitz, the glamour, the gambling, the food, the women. In this vlog, you'll get to see a lot of the background shots that you could only see if you have backstage access. If you are an outdoorsman, you like to do things like hunt, fish, go on boats, don't worry, you can't really do that in Vegas, but there's places not too far where you can go and you can enjoy all those things. If you're going to Vegas, be prepared to be hustled. It happens to the best of us. Panhandlers in Vegas make about 30000 a year. Some of them are addicted to drugs. Others honestly have mental problems. I know actors in California that drive to Vegas just to practice. Some of them move there because they get to practice their craft, they get to go through all their emotions, they get to work on their stuff and get paid to do so. Some people stoop low and use kids. It's a hustle. Let me explain. I know a guy who would go grab a random neighborhood kid that he knew and they would walk up and down the street all day with a sob story asking people for money. When they're ready to take a break, they come back, both pockets full of money, about three, four hours later after they're done with their break, go out and do it again. It's a hustle. Be aware of hidden intentions in Vegas. When I first moved there, I tried to help an old lady across the street, and she cursed me smooth the fuck out. She said, get away from me, I don't need no help. I was just trying to be a gentleman. I had no idea, this blew my mind. Another shot came to me when I would wake up 7 o'clock in the morning, go to work, and there would be people drunk stumbling out of casinos. 
One thing you have to understand is people from all over the world go to Vegas to enjoy themselves. It's different time zones everywhere across the world. Vegas never shuts down. One thing I liked about Vegas that if I need to go get a haircut or my girl need to go get her nails done, two o'clock in the morning, we can go do that. There's really two main spots to go party at in Vegas. One is the Strip. The other one is the Old Strip, also known as Fremont. Fremont Street has a lot of history. It's kind of where Vegas first started. Still fun times and free concerts though. And the zip line. People tend to look over the real art of DJing. 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 People tend to look over the real art of DJing. DJing. <laughs> 